I just retired in June. Oh, okay. 31 years of teaching at wow. New Prairie High School. Congratulations. And, um, never regretted a, a Monday or looked forward to a Friday. Nice. Steve Suszynski may be the only Democrat running for office in the state of Minnesota to have introduced President George W. Bush to a large, pumped-up audience. The president, having come to exchange perspectives with leading Minnesota educators at one of our state's top public schools. For three decades, Steve taught history and American government there. As an educator, he's had his fair share of honors, including one from the White House, that is an Excellence in Teaching Award from President Bill Clinton. And now, Steve, you're challenging right-wing incumbent David Hahn for his desk in the Minnesota Senate. Steve Shazinski, welcome to Democratic Visions. Thanks for having me. Now you're running in Senate District 48, which includes Eden Prairie and Southern Minnetonka. What issues are you hearing from the people who are knocking on those doors, yeah. and what are they telling you? You're out there. I mean, I'm not out there, but you're banging on those yeah. doors. 95 degree temperature, good luck. People, they probably give you a glass of water once in a while. They but offer. They probably give you a piece of their mind. So what is the piece of their mind? Earlier in the summer, it was all about partisan politics and gridlock. And then after the conventions, there was this shift, more specific issues being brought up. Light rail's the number one, um, clearly number one. After that, people really want everybody in the state to have the quality of education sure. that we're getting in the Southwest Metro. And then gun safety. Um, we're, not, we're not talking about uh, you know, how to handle a firearm. We're talking about a little more rigorous uh, control over who gets firearms? Correct, which ties in with the other issue people are talking about, which is mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, getting help for people before they get a firearm legally and do something um, horrible. So those three issues. You, you mentioned that they, uh, uh, they're concerned about the maintenance of the high standards set by the high schools out here. What, what, what are your thoughts, uh, Steve, about preschool education? You know, you're in, you were in the trenches. Do you think uh, preschool education has merit uh, uh, on a statewide basis? I do. I think any, Why is that? I just, yeah, the studies say that it, the kids, many children are c coming to kindergarten with this huge gap. Those that are already reading to those that have never even held a book. And I just think anything we can do to get those kids starting at a level playing field. So, what, uh, yeah, pre-K. Now let's, let's uh, fast forward to uh, post-election day. You're the new uh, senator from uh, Senate District 48. What, uh, what's at the top of your list when you go over to St. Paul uh, for the next legislative session? Um, one of the things I used to use in government class is show them a referendum and what a referendum looks like. And referendums for school um, referendums are worded in such a way that if you vote yes, your property taxes will go up, but if you vote no, it doesn't say anything. So it doesn't, it's no balance. And all they're doing on school board referendums is saying if you vote yes, your taxes will go up. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So they mm -hmm. don't say, and if you vote no, your property values might go down mm -hmm. or your prop or class sizes will go up. Exactly. And so that's a little pet peeve of mine. Well, well let's talk about the bigger picture. Yeah. Right? On a statewide basis, do you think funding for education should be dependent upon whether a referendum passes in a given area? No. It seems to me that should be the, con the Minnesota Constitution requires uh, equal statewide spending for education. And it doesn't seem to me that it's particularly fair for, I live in Edina, for Edina to pass a big referendum and some other uh, less well-off uh, municipality or school district is unable to, uh, the, the voters simply lack the wherewithal to be able to uh, fund that kind of improvement. Do you, would, are you in favor of uh, referendums as such? As they are now? Yeah. N um, no, because I, um, the argument could almost be made they're unconstitutional. There's one part of the state constitution that specifically mentions a duty of the state legislature and it's to provide a general, as you said, and uniform education. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's a, it's a uniform educational system under the current funding. You're, you're now, you're seated over in St. Paul. Yeah. The Democrats have retained the majority. Hopefully the House has flipped and now is Democrats so something can get accomplished yeah. so we can get off this gridlock basis that we've been operating under. Somebody with your experience in education would seem to be a natural for placement on one or more of the committees that deal with education. Is that something that you'd seek from uh, Senate Absol leadership? Yeah, absolutely. Education would be um, wonderful. Um, 33 years of all that knowledge and wisdom. Well, I'm going to ask you about that right yeah, now. Okay. So what, what, is, what is transmittable from what you uh, uh, knew and taught to service in the legislature? 
I think um, I think if you asked all those twelve thousand students that walked through my door, twelve thousand yeah, students, um, twenty four thousand parents, wow. a lot of them voting. Hopefully, wow. I think if you asked them all about me, they'd say um, he promoted civic virtue and political efficacy and the common good, and that I was very very passionate about what I believe in. I believe in government. I right. really do, right. and that I was open minded to both sides of every issue. Right. I really truly believe that the what's coming is much better than what is. Completely. So I'd like to bring those values to That's completely to antithetical to the National Republican Party, which is hell and brimstone <laughs> are, are on the horizon. But uh, yeah. I like that, a positive un uh, outlook on uh, uh, the political life going forward. Tell me, Steve, why is it important that voters retire David Hahn from the state Senate? Mm -hmm. One of the things that's important, I think, is that the traffic hasn't gotten any better. So if you're heading <laughs> east on 494, in the morning or in the afternoon, you're in a peck of trouble. So it seems to me that the Southwest Light Rail Transit Line is unnatural for Eden Prairie. Why doesn't Senator Hand get on board, so to speak? Um, you know, believe it or not, I just watched a debate of, from four years ago, a forum. And four years ago, it was like the debate was today. He was against it, and he said there's just no data to prove that it's necessary. Well, he needs to go out door knocking, because if you go out door knocking, that's the number one issue people want to talk about is light rail. And the overwhelming majority of the residents of Eden Prairie and Minnetonka want that light rail line. I mean, they get it. They, the data is there to substantiate that it, it needs to be built. Jobs, construction, um, housing little developments, it's, and the federal government's picking up you know, 900 million of it. It seems like it just should be, let's build it. Well, isn't it true that the, uh, the light rail uh, is, is supported by the local business community in Eden Prairie? Mm -hmm. And is it also true that the mayor, uh, Nancy Tyra Lukens, is also in favor of the, uh, of the project? As well as the mayor of Minnetonka. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it seems like a no-brainer. Do you have any explanation as to why someone in their right mind would not uh, be supportive of that project? And it does seem like Republicans were, would support it. Light rail will en encourage development. The companies are building, already anticipating light rail coming in. So they're investing before we make our investment. It's going to get built. We're, we're well, going to get it done. Very recently, the money has been found. Mm. So this program is a goal, which is great. That's great news. Now, it seems to me that Senate District 48 which probably used to be sort of a bastion of republicanism, no longer is. From what I've been able to read, it actually voted as an aggregate for President Obama mm -hmm. in 2012, by a slight margin, but yes. nevertheless uh, voted for President Obama. Right. So uh, let's talk about right social issues. I mean, I, I suspect that Senator Han is out of step with his constituents on social issues. For example, uh, the gay marriage uh, uh, constitutional amendment back in 2012. He was on the wrong side of that issue, wasn't he? Yes, he was on the wrong side of history. I mean, and, it, uh, you know, the abortion issue is a hard issue. It's hard because it should be a personal issue, but the Republicans want to make it a public issue. But you don't get 100% rating from the Minnesota citizens concerned for life like S Senator Hahn has unless you are a absolute rigid anti-abortionist person. And, he, and that's the rating that I read he got. And it correspondingly got 0% from NARAL, which is uh, an organization that's uh, out there to promote uh, women's health and reproductive freedom. One of the proudest endorsements I've received so far is from Planned Parenthood. That's great. Yeah, I was um, very proud of that one. Steve, here's, a, here's one off uh, from left field. Who are your political heroes? For 20 years, I've taken students to Washington, D.C. and go through all the memorials. And uh, that Teddy Roosevelt Memorial, it's, um, it's pretty powerful, and they've got these four pillars with his quotes on them, and you can't help but think, where, where, are, where are these people today with such zealousness and passion for civic duty? One of the quotes is about civic duty and your responsibility to the common good, and mm -hmm. so I'd say Teddy Roosevelt. Steve, uh, teaching for 31 years, I'm sure you've had an opportunity to get a pretty good feel on the community. What are the, what specifically is Eden Prairie, has it changed much over the time that you've been uh, teaching? Um, 30 years ago it was predominantly, you know, European descent and now it's, um, it runs the gamut of, the, it re reflects America sure. much more and I think that surprises people from outside Eden Prairie. Yeah. They have this image of what it was, you know, 25, 30 years ago and they don't realize it's, um, it's roughly about a third of the high school is now people of color. The diversity adds a richness 
I mean, that's the American, that's the Statue of Liberty. I mean, that's how the rich fa fabric of this great nation is now reflected in my classroom. And it just makes teaching American government, you get all those different viewpoints that you used to didn't get. So I, I'm sure you used to snap quizzes. That's probably was one of your uh, mainstays. So now you're in my classroom. Yeah. Pop, pop quiz. Here it is. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh is right. Uh, yeah, very briefly, uh, give us your perception of the Eden Prairie, Minnetonka area. What is it about that area and those, that perception that makes you want to be their representative over in St. Paul? I love Senate District 48. I, um, I excellent love schools. I understand excellent that. Excellent schools. Parks are great. Paths everywhere. Engaged citizens, I suspect. Totally. Also. Highest voter turnout um, in the state, wow. generally. Wow. Comes from the southwest metro wow. of Minnetonka and Eden Prairie, wow. hovering around 80%. Yeah. Are you a native Minnesotan? No. Um, I grew up in Superior, Wisconsin. What? And, yeah. Packerland? <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> and... Uh, so I grew up in Superior, Wisconsin, and I came of age in the 70s, and the steel mills and the iron ore, my dad were, worked um, in the shipyards and um, longshoremen, and everything had just dried up. Middle class community, blue collar working class. I never saw a guy go to work with a briefcase in my life. It was always a lunch pail, mm -hmm. and there was nothing. Everything had shut down. The economy was middle class America was just de devastated. So I hitchhiked to Minneapolis because that was the next place where okay. there were jobs. And I got a room at the Lemington, or I got a room at the um, YMCA while they were singing, having fun at the YMCA, the village That's people. Right. I wasn't having any fun. Huh. And I, was, I got a job at the Lemington Hotel and I eventually went, started going to the U part time. And um, I met my bride and we've had a couple kids and I ended up having the 31 years. But over the years, I started wondering what made me come to Minnesota? And it was the mid-70s, and now I know there was a miracle going on in Minnesota. Wendell, we just lost sure. Wendell Anderson. Yes. And so there was this miracle going on in Minnesota, and that's why I came running here. This time, I don't want to run away. I want to be part of a second Minnesota miracle. And um, in education, and in environment, and in transportation, and um, in mental health, and I, I want to be part of that and legacy that I think Minnesota's gonna have. Steve, I'm fired up just listening to you. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks, Tim. It was a pleasure meeting you, and thanks for all you do. Democratic Visions is handcrafted by volunteers from Eden Prairie, Hopkins, Minnetonka, Edina, and Bloomington. Watch us on select cable systems and on our YouTube channel. This is Carol Sundstrom. Mm -hmm.